Hello my dear students, I welcome you all to this segment of video solutions where we are going to look at the chemistry paper of 3rd September 2020 evening shift. Let us have a look at the first question. The incorrect statement is this question is from compounds of D block. So when you are having a question like this, please go through all the statements very carefully. First of all, make a note of it that they are asking the incorrect statement. Okay. So first statement, magnet and permagnet ions are paramagnetic. Magnet and permagnet ions are tetrahedral. Magnet ion is green in color and permagnet ion is purple in color. In magnet and permagnet ions, the pi bonding takes place by overlap of p orbitals of oxygen and d orbitals of magnes. Let us draw the structure of both. So, in permagnet ion what we have? In permagnet ion, we have Mn tetrahedrally bonded to four oxygens. There are three pi bonds. There are three pi bonds and one oxygen carries a charge of minus one. Oxidation state of Mn is plus seven. Okay, the structure is tetrahedral. structure is tetrahedral. What about the pi bonds? Does Mn have p orbitals to form pi bonds? Oxygen has p orbitals, Mn has empty d orbitals, Mn has empty d orbitals. So here we have p pi d pi bonds. What we have is we have p pi d pi bonds. Okay. So oxidation state, tetrahedral and p pi d pi bonds are clear. Let us look at the magnet ion. So if you are talking about the magnet ion, the difference between per magnet and magnet is what? Here two oxygens are carrying negative charges and what we have is, we have two pi bonds. Both are tetrahedral, both are having p pi d pi bonds. The difference is, this is having a charge of plus 7 Mn and here it is having a charge of plus 6. So in both the cases, there are a lot of similarities, but MnO4- is not paramagnetic. MnO4- is not paramagnetic. Let us look at the options guys. So the first statement says, magnet and permagnet ion are paramagnetic. So that is our answer guys, okay, because magnet ion cannot be paramagnetic, permagnet ion can be paramagnetic. So our answer is 1. Okay, is that clear to all of you? If I talk about the color as well, permagnet ion is purple, permagnet ion is purple and magnet ion is green in color, okay. So that is, I'll say that it is a moderate level question. Okay, not very difficult, not very easy. Just have to take care of few things guys. Okay, let us look at the next question. Consider the hypothetical situation where the azimuthal quantum number L takes value 0, 1, 2, n plus 1. Take a note of this guys, it is n plus 1 it is not n minus 1 that the usual case is n minus 1 where n is the principal quantum number then the element with atomic number 9 is the first alkali metal 6 has 2p valence subshell 8 is the first noble gas 13 has a half filled valence subshell what we'll do over here is we will first look at what are the subshells present in the shell okay so, if I am talking about n equal to 1, so what all values of L are possible over here? The values of L which are possible are 0, 1 and 2 because it is n plus 1, okay, because values of L are 0 to n plus 1. 
if i'm talking about the second shell so the values are 0 1 2 and 3 so your first shell has three sub shells and your second shell has four sub shells so now the new electronic configuration that we are looking at will be what so this will be 1s 1p and 1d guys okay and followed by 2s 2p 2d okay and 2f let us look at the options and what all atomic numbers we have in the option let us look at that if i'm talking about 9 so if i have an atomic number of 9 so how will i distribute the electrons the distribution of electrons will be your s will have let's say we have 9 so the distribution of electrons here will be i'll have two electrons here six and you're left with what you're left with one electron will go in 1d six so if you have six so this will be two and four next one is eight so this will be two and six okay the last one is 13 the last one is 13 so if atomic number is 13 so this will be two six and you're left with five electrons so where will those five electrons go in 1d so here your d subshell is what your d subshell is half filled so let us look at the option guys nine is the first alkali metal no your electron is going in 1d so it is not the first alkali metal six has 2p valence subshell six has 1p valence subshell it does not have 2p valence subshell 8 is the first noble gas no it is not 13 has a half filled valence subshell that is correct guys if i look at the options now here we have 5 which is a half filled d so the correct answer is the correct answer is option 4 the correct answer is option 4 okay let us look at the next question guys so let's solve question number three guys so what we have in question number three the decreasing order of reactivity of following compounds towards nucleophilic substitution sn2 so keep in mind that they are asking about sn2 okay and what all compounds are given to us first one is a benzyl chloride second one is ortho and meta substituted benzyl chloride third one is meta and para substituted benzyl chloride fourth one is your meta di substituted benzyl chloride if you look at okay so these are the options that we have okay let us solve this guys how to go about it what are the factors which will affect sn2 mechanism let us look at that guys so if i talk about the first option first compound first compound let us keep it aside for some time let us look at the second third and the fourth one second third and the fourth so if i have a no2 at ortho position and no2 at para position what will no2 at ortho do no2 at ortho will have a very strong minus i effect and it will also do what it will also sterically hinder the ch2cl right one of the very important factors of sn2 mechanism is steric hindrance guys okay so here if this carbon over here is sterically hindered by the no2 present and in this case this carbon is not sterically hindered so what will undergo sn2 faster three or two the answer between both of them is three three will undergo sn2 substitution faster guys okay out of the fourth option and the first option okay you look at the fourth and the first fourth one has a no2 group fourth one has a no2 group so what will the no2 group do no2 group will facilitate sn2 mechanism it will facilitate sn2 mechanism 
that's why fourth will be faster than what fourth will be faster than one so out of all what we have got to know is the fastest one to undergo SN2 mechanism will be the third one and the slowest one will be the first so let us see if any of the options are matching our answers so if I look at option 3 option 3 compound 3 is maximum and 1 is minimum right so the answer is option 3 guys I hope you have understood this a question from halogen derivatives of alkanes an important question but a moderate level question not a very difficult question guys okay let us go on to the next question